Thanks for staying with us. Uh, Femi Falano condemned the FCT minister and yes, on weakest provision of houses to judges, arguing it undermines judicial independence and conflicts with the judiciary's constitutional financial autonomy. Falano highlighted the risk of bias, suggesting judges uh, might feel beholden to the federal uh, capital territory's executive arm if they accept such gifts. Wiki responded, clarifying that the housing project was part of President Tinubu's approved uh, 2024 budget policy aimed at promoting judicial independence and security. Wiki emphasized he was only implementing a federal initiative designed to ensure the judges have stable housing away from potential influences. To discuss this with me is Mr. Biodun Shoumi, a public affairs analyst. Good morning and welcome to the program, sir. Good morning. What is your own take about uh, offering these um, houses to judges? Well, um, it's quite clear from um, the explanation given by Wiki that, um, yes, the president may be well intended or the gifts well intended, mo motivated by genuine desire, you know, to ensure that judges are not living within uh, areas where they can easily be influenced by criminal elements within the country. But it's not just cr criminal elements. We also have civil litigants who may be in a position to influence judges, and that's not what anybody wants in our country. Uh, but notwithstanding that, Falano has a very, um, very solid claim you know, in the sense that there are two issues involved. One is the issue of the actual act itself. When you give uh, gifts in the manner in which is being given to judges when at a time that you have uh, cases in court, uh, it may be deemed to be an attempt to influence judges, you know, in your favor. That's one. The second angle to it is about the perception. People may perceive any judgment, you know, given by the courts, even though the judges have done their uh, duty judiciously, it may be perceived as if um, they were influenced to render that verdict. So when you look at the public perception of it, the morality angle and the public perception of it, then you easily agree with Falano and said this is, um, this shouldn't have happened. But taking into consideration the feelings of the federal government or the intention of the federal government, I would have rather suggest, since the judiciary has its own budget, I would have been more comfortable if more allocations for those houses are actually situated within the budget of the judiciary itself so that the judiciary is responsible for execution and delivery of such projects except when the judiciary chose to you know uh, to to assign it you know to another arm of uh, government uh, responsible for execution otherwise it will be seen it's just about perception here it will be perceived as if it's an attempt to influence it. and particularly coming from a, a well, um, I don't want to use the word uh, controversial. Well, it's coming from a, from someone of Wiki's um, status, um, who is not only a former governor, but um, also allegedly involved in the current uh, going on in uh, Liba State. So, yes, I would want to, on the face value, accept the federal government explanation. But at the same time, I think it's uh, important that that is done through the judiciary itself rather than being done by the executives, if it is well intended. Yeah, you have said it all. Uh, timing and perception is very key when you are when doing some things uh, because there's, there's a gift you can give and it's, it is just a gift. And there's a gift you can give because of the time and the perception, it will be seen as a bribe and all that. So this brings to question... Uh, whether it's presidential uh, initiative or not, it brings to question the, um, the independence of the judiciary. And like you have pointed out, you would have uh, liked a situation where the budget of the, of the judiciary is, um, is increased so that they can do these things for themselves. But at this time, that they are not, or they are being handed these things like this, because after the election, of the president when uh, there were still cases in court and all that we understand that he increased the the salaries of the judges to an amount that was not there which which is good uh, by the way uh, but everybody was suspecting that there's something uh, foul about it now the houses and all that so 
do you think the judiciary really does have that uh, independence or or they still are tied to the prong strings of the federal government as it is at this time and if that is the case then which way forward what do we need to do yes um let me start with um, the issue of that salary that was uh, increased there is no doubt if you speak to many senior advocates of nigeria or many lawyers actually they will tell you that the pay disparity between judges and lawyers appearing before them is so huge to the extent that you have lawyers with a turnover of a billion, five billion, and 10 billion, 10 billion a year in Nigeria appearing before judges who are being paid peanuts, you know, less than a million naira, you know, and therefore, you know, they are likely, uh, well, they, well, well, in theory, uh, one would say is it that they can easily get intimidated or they seek papers one way or the other to meet their daily needs. So within the, that context, uh, many people, few people will argue that it should be right to increase judges' um, salaries. Otherwise, we won't have the bright minds going to the bench. What you love is everybody will go to the bar because of the money, but nobody will want to serve the country um, out of commitments to ensure you know, justice uh, for all. So within that context, I can understand that. Again, like we said, is the timing. And then who should have done it? Shouldn't this have been added to their mm -hmm. uh, budget and allowed the National Assembly to approve it and then uh, let it go, uh, rather than it being the executive doing it? There's this thing we have in Nigeria, and it's common with many uh, uh, politicians, particularly even at local government level, you will not believe it, is this Father Christmas approach to things. We think we want to do the right thing, but we want it to be seen as we are the one doing it. So I'm helping you. I'm donating public money, you know, towards public good, you know, to you. And I have the right to do it. If I don't do it, you wouldn't get the thing you want. You know? So there's this approach which we have. It's paternalistic in, in, in a sense that we think that once we are in political power, we are the ones who will determine the fate of people and then or, 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 or gift them if we choose to. No, and that's not what's about. It says something about uh, National Assembly. Because in all this, you cannot blame the executive um, solely. What happens to the National Assembly responsible for oversight functions? Why is it that the issues you are, pick, you are picking up, which Fermi Fallon have picked up, why are these issues not being picked up by National Assembly? Again, it tells you about these, the quality of people in the National Assembly. Plan. Number two, it also says something about the paternalistic approach, you no. Know, um somebody my godfather put me there i have to be careful um, if not why won't they pick up all these issues these things are not happening uh, the executive may want to do something but the national assembly is there to check them so if that check is not really happening we cannot leave them you know free of blame you know in all this but at the end of the day it also shows the weakness of our separation of powers and therefore, uh, it's something we need to do. We, we have the law. It's about the implementation. So we really need to revisit it while ensuring that the National Assembly, the legislative arm, is fully independent of the, uh, the executive. Uh, so also the judiciary should be fully independent, just like what we're trying to do to the local government and financial autonomy. There will be no reason for any state government or, any, or the federal government to say they are gifting money to local government itself. So we really need to go all the way and ensure compliance, you know, with the doctrine of separation of powers. It has to be effective in our country. Yeah, then who will be at the vanguard because it seems to be benefiting the people who are there. National Assembly, uh, for instance, a very, a very funny thing, when uh, the new administration came, uh, almost about 90% of them had the signature cap of the president to show that they are, children, they are the boys of the president. So... Are those the kind of people that are going to be independent enough to enact the laws and do what are, whatever they are supposed to do? But also, uh, when Wike was talking, there was also an indictment on the security because he said that, uh, apart from the fact that they need to be away from external influences, I don't know who influences them that cannot go to those quarters, uh, but they also need to be secure. Like now, the, the judges are not secure enough, so they want to put them somewhere like a barracks. Hello? 
Yes. Can you hear me? Hello. The line is highly very faint. Okay. Should I speak higher? Can you hear me now? Uh, Hello? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? It seems Mr. Shomi cannot hear me at this moment. There seems to be a technical problem. But we are looking at the fact that the FCT minister is uh, more or less donating houses to judges. And Nigerians are crying out. Can you hear me? I will turn again again. Can I'm you hear me now? I can try and log in again. I will try and quickly log in. Okay. Well, we've, we're talking with Mr. Biodun Shoumi uh, about the fact that the FCT minister is donating houses to the, to the judges. Uh, the minister has come up to defend himself that it's a presidential initiative and the president asked him, it's covered in the budget, to do those houses and give to the to the judges, and then uh, it's because of security reasons and uh, for integrity purposes, because these judges will be away from influences, external influences. And I'm just wondering how how much influence he's uh, he's preventing when every judge is a phone call away, when the same people that are are uh, uh, the ones that bring the influences can also just walk into these judges' quarters? Or are they saying that they will keep everybody out? These judges will never go out until they have a case in court. I don't, I don't, don't understand. But it begs the question, is the judiciary really, really independent? And what else can we do? That's where we were before we lost uh, the audio of Mr. Bjordan Shomi. I don't know if he's back now. He can hear me now. Mr. Shomi, can you hear me now? Okay, he seems not to uh, hear me at this uh, moment. I can hear you. Okay, if you can hear me, yes. Uh, I, I was just talking about the indictment also that uh, the FCT minister's statement uh, brought, that apart from uh, the fact that they will be away from external influences, which I don't think is an excuse, that they will be safer in that, that place, which means security will be more. So he's now taking them to a place like a barracks, more or less, uh, to be where people will not meet them. I don't know if those are excuses that are good enough at all, because I see external influences coming from the same people who will have unfettered access to whatever judges' quarters that will be. Yes, um, we should not forget where this is coming from. It's not just about we here. This is a standard practice. There are many states in Nigeria where you have judges' quarters, mm -hmm. which we have never been addressed. We should know where, look, I can mention states to you. It's the same situation in many states in Nigeria. Now, where is this coming from? This is coming from what we inherited from the colonial masters, the concept of GRA, government reservation area, mm -hmm. where it's only uh, the government officials and the elites that actually live there. And then the, um, whatever they do right behind the scene, they are insulated from the people. Uh, themselves, while the elites are able to engage each other within that comfort zone. That's where it's coming from. And till today, we still have this concept of GRA in many places, when in reality, there should be nothing called GRA. It's a colonial issue. In fact, it's still insulting and very annoying that we, we still inherit um, those um, GRA concepts, and then we are operating with it. And it's exactly what we are doing with judges. So, you know, we are house judges in certain quarters, which are built by government, they are reserved by government, and then uh, that is where they are supposed to be. And then within that context, um, uh, they are insulated from the people. What about those in political power? What about the elites? Are they insulated from the elites? They are not. Are they insulated from people in political power? They are not. Quite often, go and look at all the places where you have judges' quarters. They are not just judges' quarters. There are also quarters allocated to politicians. You know, within those uh, environment and mm. some elites, you know. So therefore, um, that your your protecting them is not in absolute terms; is in relative terms. It depends on who are you protecting them from, the people, or the elites or the political class. If it's the elites and political class, they still have access to judges, but not uh, necessarily the people. So. Um, I think we need to discontinue that practice. It's the same theory that 
you know, that um, guides the issue of police barracks, why we, we still keep having police barracks all over the whole place, rather than police officers actually living within communities with people so that they know the criminals, they know those who are responsible. It's the whole theory of We are housing them in a barrack so that related from which ordinary people are facing in the country. So I think that's where it's coming from. I don't really accept his own explanation, honestly. Okay. I... Ah, well, um, <laughs> it's, it's uh, like we said from the beginning, the timing, the perception is wrong. Now the budget has been given to the National Assembly, or the president might even give them the budget today, but it's expected that it would be like a 47 trillion uh, and all that. So we're, we're looking at um, things that will likely be in the budget. And I'm not sure that this um, autonomy of the judiciary will be reflected in such a, a manner that we would want it. The federal government will still be doing things and giving handouts to the uh, judiciary. But now that Falano is pursuing this, which may not have a headway anyway, uh, what do you think the judiciary themselves should be doing, the judiciary itself should be doing at this moment? Do they wait uh, and keep going cap in hand to get some largesse from the government or they should rise up in one voice on their own to protest this? Because they seem to be very comfortable with it that the federal government is always dictating what comes to them and what doesn't come to them. So when it is crumbs, they take the crumbs. When it is a, a whole bread, they take the whole bread. Can you hear me, me Mr. Shobomi? Hello. I can't hear you again. The audio again. Okay. Ah, well, maybe, maybe at this point we can just let it rest for some time and see how uh, the, the whole situation plays out. We've been talking with Mr. Abiodun Shoomi, a public affairs analyst. We're looking at the fact that, according to the FCT minister, it's a presidential initiative to hand out, that's the word I'd like to use, uh, quarters or houses to the judges. And Falano and other Nigerians are crying out that the timing and the perception is wrong and that it doesn't show anything about the separation of powers. But that's uh, how much we can go, especially owing to the technical problems we are um, experiencing on the side of uh, Mr. Shoomi. Uh, but it's been productive, I hope, and we have learned something and we're taking something home at this point. We'll take a short break and when we return, we will be looking at the federal government approving MTEF for 2025-2027. Stay with us.